Today we're going to look at Unit 1 of our Business Negotiation class. You're going to need to follow along in your book, and if you can download the slides, that would be helpful. So let's go ahead and just begin by looking at Unit 1. What is negotiation? Let's just begin with a simple introduction of what negotiation is all about. Negotiation satisfies needs. Negotiation is a normal human condition or behavior. What do I mean by that? Satisfy needs and is a normal behavior. It means everybody does it. Maybe you like to negotiate. Most of us don't. That's a reality. Some of us are good at it naturally. Most of us aren't. Maybe you've gone shopping with your mother or father. Most likely maybe your grandmother and you've seen her negotiate very toughly. Maybe you've seen somebody go shopping in your family and they go to the supermarket and they want to negotiate and you feel embarrassed. Or maybe they went to the fresh market or they went to a night market and they negotiated very long and tough, very hard negotiation over just a few dollars. And you thought, boy, that's a waste of time. That's embarrassing. Well, people who negotiate like that in business are winners. They're the people who win in negotiations. They get better deals, they beat their opponents, they get more, and they're winners. It's very simple. I know it's hard to accept. We like to believe that everyone can just get along and everything will be okay, but in reality, business is a competition. Very often, usually, I would say almost always, the better you negotiate, the more you're going to get. And what does that mean? It means you have to adopt a behavior that maybe you're not comfortable with. I think it's also important to point out, probably you're, if you're a student of mine, you're probably a young person, maybe 19, 20, 21 years old. And you may feel that negotiation is the old way to do things. The new way to do things is get along, uh, just pay the price that's on the sticker. Well, that's probably just because you don't have a lot of experience in the real world. This is not a generational thing. People who negotiate do get better deals. And your grandmother or your grandfather or someone in your family who negotiates, yes, they may be older than you, but the reason they negotiate is not because this is something everyone did 20, 30 years ago. It's because they've learned to negotiate, to get a better deal, because they've gotten the worst deal before, because they've been on the bad side of the deal before. So negotiation is a behavior we all do. It's common across all cultures. Some cultures naturally do it better. Some cultures teach children from the time they're young to negotiate. Some cultures don't. But in this class, we're gonna focus on how to win in negotiation. What are the skills you need to do it, to do a better job of it? So keep an open mind. Remember, negotiation is a normal behavior. We just need to try to excel at it. Okay, let's come over here to our slides. Okay, here we go. All of us are negotiating every day. Sometimes we don't think we're negotiating because we just don't think about it. But we often are. Let me give you an example. Maybe you're with your friends and you're thinking, uh, I want to go out to lunch. Don't you need to talk about where you're going to go? Don't you need to express where you want to go and ask others where they want to go? That's a kind of negotiation. Now that negotiation may not be a tough negotiation. It may not be a complex negotiation. It may be just trying to get through your day and get something done, but it still is a negotiation. And so in this sense, we're all negotiating all of the time. So why not get used to it and try to do a good job at it? One place we negotiate very often is in our families. Now, in our families, we feel kind of natural. We feel relaxed. We feel at home. And from the time you were born, you were probably negotiating over toys with your brother or sister, over snacks or food with your other siblings or cousins. So negotiation is really natural in the family. 
that's a place where even though you're young, because you've spent so many years, you've learned that if you want to get something, you need to negotiate. If you want to be able to go to a movie and the movie's at eight o'clock at night, you're not going to get home to two to ten o'clock. You maybe you need to talk to your mother or your father or both and negotiate about that. So in our class, I'm going to use family examples as examples to help you understand negotiation situations, context, the context of a negotiation. So usually we're going to have one family example and then one business example. We're going to focus on what are the main points, ideas, how do you do it, what's the strategies and the tactics, but we're also going to practice some of our language in negotiation. Now why are we going to do that? Well there's two reasons why. One reason is we want to help our English get a little bit better, get a little bit more natural, get a little bit more used to using English in negotiation sense. Probably in business, one place you would use it is in international negotiation. If you have international buyer or you want to be a buyer, you're buying from a seller, you're going to have to negotiate about things like price, quality, delivery. All of these things are negotiated every day by business people. If you do this better, if you improve, you're going to move up in your company faster because businesses, inside businesses are always looking for people who are good negotiators because you help your company win. You help your company get something. So it's important to be a good negotiator. Number two, number two, we're going to try to just practice language a little bit, maybe to make our English a little bit better in general. So this class is presented in English. I hope that you can participate in English and we're going to practice our dialogues in English. So it's a little bit of negotiation, business, a little bit of theory, a little bit of practice, and a little bit of language practice to help our language get better. Hopefully at the end of the semester we can put these together and in the future you can use these very practical skills. After all, negotiation is a practical skill. It's not useful to talk about negotiation if you can't do it. So I'm going to focus on doing it. Let's begin then with our first dialogue we have. So we're going to look at a family, right? Family situations, why? Because they're very natural, we're used to them. Let's take a look at this dialogue. Maybe you can read along with me from your book. Fred says, we need a plan. We need to plan our summer vacation. So here we have Fred who looks like a father and they're going to get ready for their summer vacation. Jane says, I don't want to wait until the last minute like we did last year. So here we begin with a negotiation context or situation. Fred and Jane, mom and dad, uh, husband and wife. Fred's pointing out we need to do something and he's giving it a kind of a deadline before. And Jane is saying she wants to plan before a deadline too. So in a way they found something in common. This is actually a very interesting idea. You cannot have a negotiation unless you have at least two people who have something in common. And here we have that. Fred and Jane both want to do something. That's a key point. Fred says, we couldn't even get a hotel room. He means last year they waited too long. Everybody or every place was packed. That is a special reason to plan ahead. So Fred is laying out, why do we want to plan ahead? Why do we want to make a plan for summer even though summer's not here yet? And Jane says, it should not be too hard to get a flight to Disneyland if we go before the summer rush. Disneyland's in California, of course. She wants to go to Disneyland. So she's going to plan ahead. And Fred says, I thought we would travel overseas, see another country. So now we begin a key part of negotiation. We have something in common, but we have something different. What's different? It looks like Jane saying she wants to go to Disneyland and Fred saying he would like to travel overseas. So I guess maybe they live in America and he would like to go to Disneyland, which is in California, or she would like to go to Disneyland and Fred would like to go overseas to another country. 
Jane says, the kids really want to go to Disney. They've been counting on it for months. All their friends have been to Disney many times. So now Jane is laying out the information of why it's important, why it's important to go to Disneyland. And then Fred responds. Fred says, I know, but traveling overseas will give them a chance to see another culture, really learn something about the world. So now we're developing two positions, Fred and Jane. They both have something in common. They want to go somewhere for the summer. They want to plan ahead. They don't want to wait till the last minute. This they agree on. So they do agree on something. If you agree on nothing, you cannot negotiate. If you agree on something, you can begin a negotiation. So we begin with, yes, we have a goal. This goal is almost the same, but now we find out in this goal something is different in this case quite different this is going to disneyland or traveling overseas for vacation jane says i think everyone would like to just rest during their vacation go to disneyland you can rest stay in the hotel you can rest go on the rides take it easy have fun Fred says, that sounds inflexible. You mean we can only rest on our vacation? We can't learn anything? Now Fred is kind of fighting back. You see, he's saying, well, I don't agree with you. What do you mean you can only rest? That might not be good. And Jane responds, that is not what I mean. Of course, we can do both. I am flexible. Why does Jane say she's flexible? And why does Fred accuse her of being inflexible because in a negotiation we have something in common and we have something that's not in common it's important for us to try to make the thing that's not in common come together somehow find something we can agree that way we can solve our disagreement we can come to a conclusion if I say you're inflexible that means you are not willing to change if you are not willing to change then we cannot move together so Fred is using this to kind of accuse or say that Jane is doing something wrong, inflexible. Jane says, no, she is flexible. She can change her mind. She says so. We shall see if she really does. Get to my slide here, give me one second. There we go. Fred says, well, you know, our neighbors, the Millers, they took separate vacations last year with everyone going where they wanted. That seemed to make everyone happy. But I really want us to have a vacation together. Now here we come into a kind of another core point. I want to do something, you want to do something. We both want to go on vacation. Okay, we agree. Next. I want to go overseas. You want to go to Disneyland. We disagree. What's one way to solve this? One way is you go where you want and I go where I want. If you go where you want and I go where I want, I'm happy and you're happy. So this is a real negotiation strategy. It can lead to a conclusion of you do what you want, I do what I want, I'm happy, you're happy. However, we can see that Fred isn't really so uh, happy with this idea. He would rather go on a vacation altogether. Jane says, I agree. Separate vacations wouldn't be the same as a family trip. The bottom line is, if we don't go together, then I don't want to go. So here we have Jane giving us a bottom line. In your negotiation, the bottom line means I will not change this. This is the least I must have in order to conclude this negotiation. If we want to have a negotiation, you must at least give me this. This is my bottom line. So bottom line is really a key idea. Fred says, at least we can agree on that. 
Can we find some kind of compromise? Maybe we could stop at Disneyland for a day or two on our way to another country. So here, Fred is trying to give a compromise. Can't we have a compromise? Can we do a little bit of what you want and a little bit of what I want? Remember one way is you could do what you want, I do what I want, we don't come together. Or maybe I can do a little bit of what I want and a little bit of what you want. That's called compromise. Jane says, that's a good idea but we waste so much time at airports and then we would have to spend more money to get to and from the park and all that before we leave on an international flight. To be honest, I think we would all be tired out already. Fred says, I just don't know what we can find that is in the middle that can make everyone happy. In the middle compromise. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some vocabulary words here and I want you to practice these words because number one you can improve your English but number two even if your English is already pretty good you need to get familiar with these words because they're commonly used in negotiation settings. So let's do a little bit of both. Are you ready? Let's look at some of our words. Compromise. Compromise. So compromise means to try to give up something and the other side gives up something. Both sides give up something and you can come to an agreement. That's compromise. Inflexible. Inflexible. Inflexible means you don't want to change. Usually that's a bad thing to be inflexible. It's a good thing to be flexible. So we often accuse the other side. You are inflexible. I am flexible, you are inflexible. We often hear this. And the way to respond is, no, no, I am flexible. I want to be flexible. I don't want to be inflexible. Flexible meaning I can change. I can give up something. I can modify my ideas. Here's some phrases and idioms from the vocabulary. At least, at least, meaning that this is something in common between negotiators even though it may be small at least we have something in common at least we can agree on this at least we can agree we want to go on a vacation at least we can agree that the whole family should go we should not go separate that's the least we agree on other things we may not agree on count on this means to depend on something so you can count on something being true Bottom line. I won't go below my bottom line. This is the minimum I must have. In the middle. Between two points. In the middle. Meaning, I hope I can find something that's between you, between me, between the two sides. That's called in the middle. If we can be in the middle, that might be helpful. Maybe. Later on we'll find out if that really is helpful or not. Make everyone happy. Of course, we would like to make everyone happy. So we can say, let's have, let's try this idea. Will this make everyone happy? Let's try that idea. Will that make everyone happy? To be honest. We often hear this in negotiation. To be honest. Someone says this before they say something and they're trying to tell you, I want to tell you the truth. Now, we're going to learn in negotiation that actually one of the key points of negotiation, one of the very key points is not to be honest and not to be dishonest. That's really not either of the key points. Maybe you like to be honest, maybe you like to be dishonest, whatever. But it's very important that your secret information that we're going to talk about later stay secret. So normally, if somebody tells you, uh, to be honest, usually they're not really being honest. They're telling you something, but the information they're telling you is to try to get you to compromise or give something up to help them not really honest in the way you usually think about it. Okay, let's do a little bit of a follow-up here, a follow-up to the conversation. So Fred and Jane, they're having a disagreement. That's normally what we call it. Maybe you'd even call it a fight if they start yelling at each other or get angry. I think it's easy to get frustrated. But in reality, they're just negotiating. So this is a kind of negotiation. Negotiation has some key parts we want to remember. Let's look at what those key parts are. They include goals, 
strategies, issues, and planning. So when you have a negotiation, it's important to remember that you have some goals, you have some strategies, you have some issues, you have some planning. Now we just saw Fred and Jane. Did they have goals? Mm, kind of. Fred wanted to go overseas, Jane wanted to go to Disneyland, so that's kind of their goal. And remember their another goal was they want to have a vacation together with the family, so so again, that's kind of a goal. But then did they have a plan? Did they have a strategy? They didn't have those things. Uh, in fact, they were a little bit just making things up as they went along. Did they have an issue that was very clear? Mm, not really, no. So what happens is they're just kind of talking. And that's not a good way to negotiate because it means how are you going to win? This is a key point in negotiation that we're going to learn about in a minute. How do you know if you win or lose? Well, you begin with having goals, strategies, issues, and planning. Okay, let's take a look at the parts of a negotiation that we just mentioned, but let's look a little bit deeper into how they fit together in a, into a kind of a chain of negotiation. Okay, what we can look at here is the very first part of the negotiation, which are the, the goals. And then after the goals, you need to work on the strategy. And after the strategy, you need to work on the issues. And after the issues, you need to work on the planning. So these four parts kind of fit together before your negotiation begins, not during your negotiation. This is not this is not like steps to a negotiation. These are actually all inside every negotiation. At any time, these are all inside. So you've got your goals, your strategy, your issues, your planning. This is all inside of a negotiation. Before your negotiation begins, however, if you want to increase your chance to win, to do better, before the negotiation, you should think, what are my goals? What are my strategies? What are my issues that are important to me? And what is my plan to win this negotiation, or at least to get what I want, which is really the key point to every negotiation, to get what your goals are. So every negotiation has these parts. Every, every negotiation has goals, strategies, issues, and planning. But some people don't do them well. Some people try to ignore them. They don't make a plan. They just start talking. Maybe that's kind of their plan, to make people confused by just talking a lot. But you win your negotiation by doing these better. So in this unit, we're going to focus on how do we do these better. And in later units, we're going to focus on each one in detail to show you how to do that. Okay, you have some exercises in the book, and I'd like you to go ahead and look at those exercises, give them a try. These exercises aren't really hard. Uh, I didn't make the exercises to make it hard for you. The goal is not to be hard. The goal, in fact, is it's not to take a test or to get the right answer. The goal is to help you think about these ideas for a negotiation. Why is this important? Because when you negotiate, it's really key to get your mind in the right perspective, to get your mind in the right situation so that you can win. That's a key point, so you can win. So these exercises are made to help you get ready to get your head in the right space, to get thinking in the right direction, and to remember some of the words. It's not hard, it's easy, but I want you to start thinking this way. So. Do some of these fill in the gap exercises, which include these gap exercises. Go ahead and write up a short answer to uh, some of these topics on the next page, like one, two, three, and four down there. Uh, one, two, three, actually, right? And I want you to begin to think about negotiation. Now, before I let you go, then, let me go ahead and introduce a little bit more about why we should begin to think this way. Why, for example, let me pull up my slide here. Okay. Why should we focus on
this part here. Why, why are the parts of a negotiation so important? Why do we need to pay attention to these parts? Well, let me begin by maybe just reminding you of some negotiations you've seen before. Maybe you've gone to the night market with your mother or father or aunt. Maybe you've gone to the night market with some friends. Maybe you've bought something or you're with somebody who bought something. You saw them negotiate really hard. They really focused. They really argued what you thought maybe was arguing, but actually it was negotiation for a long time. Now, the question is, if you do go negotiate, how do you know that you're getting something you want? How do you know that you win? Let's say I go to the night market and I want to buy this uh, cup here. And I like this cup and, and so I ask the person in the market, uh, you know, what does this cup do? And he says, well, this cup is great. He tells me the features. It can keep the hot tea hot and it can keep the cold water cold. And it has a top and it has a really good handle and it can last a long time. And I say, how much is this cup, sir? And he says, this cup is maybe 100 NT dollars. And so now I need to think, uh, do I want to pay 100 or do I want to negotiate a different price? Of course, if I can negotiate a different price, what does that mean? If I negotiate a price of 80, then I save 20 and that person was selling to me, does he lose 20? Well, he certainly makes 20 less than he would have made if I paid 100, right? If I paid 100 for this cup, the seller makes 100. The buyer spends 100. If I pay 80, the buyer spends 80 and the seller makes 80. 80 is 20 less, but does he lose 20? Right? You see, I don't know because I'm not the seller. I don't know. We don't know the price. We don't know the cost, right? So what happens when you negotiate in a night market like that? If you say something like, uh, I'll give you 80. Very often, what does the salesperson say? He says, huh, it cost me 100. You'd make me lose 20. I would lose 20. This is a very normal thing to say, right? And then you say, oh, I'm sorry. I don't want you to lose money, right? Do they really lose money? Well, we don't know. This is a key part of negotiation. The secret information is secret. We, we really don't know. I guess we can check. We could go call up the supplier and ask how much one buys. One, if one wants to buy this from the supplier, how much is it? then we would know, but we, we usually don't do that and we don't know. So I have no way to know if the seller is going to really lose money. But I do know, me, the buyer, if I pay 80 or I pay 100, the difference is 20 for sure. Now then the next question becomes, what's the value of this cup to me? What do I think I get from this cup? Is it worth keeping my tea hot? Is that worth 100? Or is it worth 80? Or is it worth 50? Now here's where we begin to look at these ideas of the goals, the strategies, the issues, and the planning. Because if I think about it and I say, well, you know, I don't know, I don't care. I just want to pay less. Less is better, right? Of course, if you could give me this cup for free, that would be best. I don't think he's going to give me the cup for free, but that would be best. And so what do I do? I begin to negotiate, or in Taiwan we say sa jia, right? Cut down the price, argue with the price, right? And then sometimes people give you a rule of thumb, like people say if you travel to China and you negotiate, always cut the price in half, begin at half. Well, what, what I'm saying is, how much is this cup worth to me? Now, if I say 100, you know, mm, I have another cup. It's okay. It's not as good as this cup, maybe. It doesn't really keep my tea warm. So maybe mm, 100 is 100's a little bit too much. If it's 100, I'll just keep my other cup. I don't need it. Now, if I want 80 and I say 80, yes, 80 is worth it. I'm willing to pay 80 because I think keeping my tea warm is worth the 80 and my other cup doesn't work that good. So 80 is my goal. Now, if my goal is 80, and then I say, okay, sir, you say 100, I'll give you 80. And then the salesperson says, 80, okay, sold. What's your first reaction? Your first reaction is, huh, I should have said 60. I should have said 60. I said 80, but he gave it to me right away. I, obviously, I paid too much. So here we run into the key point of negotiation. Of course, you can always 
feel better if you get a lower price. And of course, you will feel better if you get something for less and the seller makes less money, of course. And when the seller agrees very quickly, you say, ah, oh, I should not have done that. Why? Because the, the seller made more than he expected. He was happy to make that. I could, have, I could have made the price lower and he would have not been so happy and I would be more happy. So that always happens. That's always true. Thus, the problem in negotiation is, how do you know if you win or lose? How do you know if you did a good job or a bad job? If you're just waiting for the seller to say, oh, okay, I'll give it to you and that's a bad job, then you'll feel bad. But what about the cup? Does the cup do what you want? Does the cup do what you need? Does this cup keep my tea hot and is that worth $80 to me? If that's worth $80 and the salesperson sold it to me for $80, what I wanted was $80, then actually I should think, good, I got what I wanted. It's worth $80 to me for this cup. The thing I get keeping my tea warm better than my old cup, that is worth $80 to me. If that's worth $80 to me, then I should feel I've won. I've been victorious. I've done a good job. My negotiation is successful. Okay, well, if I don't think 80, I just think, cut the price, cut the price, cut the price. How do I know I win? Well, I probably never know I win. Unless I get the cup for a zero, which is impossible, I'm always going to think, oh, I should have negotiated more. If I get the price down to 80 and I keep pushing, no, 70, and I keep pushing, no, 60, and maybe he sells it to me for 60, I'm still going to say, oh, I should have held out longer. I should have cut that price more. I should have gone for 40, right? So in negotiation, the very beginning of a negotiation, we don't really know what we want. That's not good. And at the end of a negotiation, we don't know, did we win or did we lose? Did I, good do, did I do good or did I do bad? Do I need to improve or should I just keep doing it this way? On the other hand, at the beginning of a negotiation, if you set your goal clearly, what is the value to me? How much do I want to pay to get what I get from this? Then you negotiate and then you get it. If you get it, you can say, I did a good job or I did a bad job. If my value is 80 and I negotiate and the salesperson only goes down to 90, then I say, that's it. I don't want it because if I pay 90, that is more than my value. If he goes down to 80, then I got what I wanted. If the next person comes and they negotiate behind me and they get it for 70, I should still think my goal was 80. I got it for 80. Now, maybe in the future, maybe in the future when I negotiate another time, I need to consider the value again carefully. Maybe I thought the value was more than it's worth to me. But for now, if I thought it was 80 and I get 80, then that's my goal. So in negotiation, it's important to think beforehand. What are your goals, strategies, issues? And then that will help you come up with your planning to make a plan. If you have all of these together well thought out, because you always have these in a negotiation, but maybe you don't think about it. Maybe you don't do it well. Maybe you try to ignore it. Maybe you're just always trying to go for zero, which is impossible. Lower, lower is better, better. Uh, I guess so, but what about your time? What about your energy? And what about the thing you want to get? So maybe I argue and I just keep saying lower, lower, 70, 70. And the man says, no, I won't give it to you for 70. And then what happens? I have to go home and I have to use my old cup. And then I have to suffer another week or two weeks or three weeks using my old cup that doesn't keep my tea warm. And then I say, oh, that really makes me angry. I went there. I spent the time. I came back. I got to use this old cup. And now I feel it was worth 80 instead of fighting for 70. I should have just paid 80. I think you have that experience too, don't you? I think we have both those experiences, everybody. You go somewhere, you bargain, the seller says, okay, I'll give it to you. And you say, oh, I bargained, I gave up too fast. I bargained too, too easily. I should have fought more. Or the other hand, where you bargain really hard and then you go home, you don't buy it. And then you keep regretting, oh, I should have bought it. And I wasted time there. I got to go back again. And I feel that it, I should have just bought it for the other price. So goals, strategy, issues, and planning. This is what I want you to begin to think about in this class. 
Don't just go to a strategy cold and begin. No, think beforehand, right? Number one, you must have something in common. He has a cup, I want a cup. Number two, you have to have something that's different. I want to pay 80, he wants me to pay 100. Now you begin, now I think. What are my goals? What are my strategies? What are my issues? What's my plan? Then I execute. When I'm done, I can go back and say, did I get my goals? If I got my goals, then that is a success. If I miss my goals, how much did I miss by? How much did I do that's not good? Did I miss it by 20%? Did I miss it by 50%? Did I miss it by 10%, 2%? And then I can judge it. Okay, so that's our beginning of this class. I want you to begin thinking that way. Thinking of goals. Let's start with goals. How about that? That's really a good idea. Clear, clear goals. Not just cut the price, cut the price, cut the price. Okay, see you next time in our negotiation class. Thank you.